Thank you for that introduction. Didn't that tickling remind you of all those butterflies flying around all over the place? My name is Rich Basil, and I'm here to help uh, lead us through the service today. And uh, we know uh, specifically that this month we'll have uh, special people from the congregation helping us. Uh, today we'll have a sermon by Bishop John, and uh, next week by Marv Eisner. And then uh, we also have uh, from First Lutheran coming for us that third Sunday. And then Pastor Ann will be here, and we're looking forward to that. So we want to uh, continue to pray for Pastor Ann and also for uh, Pastor Olson as uh, they continue on in their ministries. I'm reminded today of the words, I am the church, you are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And for those of you that had kids in junior choir, we sang this song. Maybe you remember it. The verses, the church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is us, a people. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, from all times and places. Sometimes the church is marching. Sometimes it's bravely burning. Sometimes it's riding and sometimes it's hiding. Always it's learning. And when the people gather, they're singing and there's praying. There's laughing and there's crying sometimes. All of it saying, I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The last verse, at Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told that good news throughout the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. That was a good reminder. We want, as we uh, take a look at our announcements today, uh, to add to our prayers this week, uh, the families of Marianne Bow, which is Susan Obermuller's mother. She passed away this week. Also, in adding to our prayers uh, that are grieving the family of Midge Hokeness, some other of Pam Rickers and Mike Hokeness. And, of course, Midge was here uh, with her husband here, Orville, for many years. Uh, also, a family grieving is the family of Judy Kepsel, Kelly Wilson's mother. And then uh, for adding for healing, um, Tracy Summers, the granddaughter of Sandra and Don Norenberg, and also Diane Olson, uh, Pastor Steve's uh, wife. She, she took a tumble last week uh, when she was running, had some stitches, and she's got some uh, work on her teeth coming up this next week. So I'm uh, praying for them. That was a tough thing, you know, to happen while they were moving and, uh, and still enjoying the running. Okay, let's stand together and we'll begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, Father, and Holy Spirit, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit that we might live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. 
And in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that God may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let's sing together. of grace which now we see appearing on earth's horizon bring light from our god that we may be abundant in joy the season god shine for us now in this dark place your name on our hearts ablazon oh day full of grace oh blessed our Lord on the earth so arriving Then came to the world that lights upon Great joy for us all retrieving For Jesus all mortals did embrace All shame and despair removing For Christ for our sins and not his own When he on the cross was hanging and then he arose and moved the stroke but we unto him belonging my joy with an angel was to raise our voices in endless singing God came to us then at Pentecost the spirit new life revealed pray together. O God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by ascending us into your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may sit down for the word. First reading is from Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter knew, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit among all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. For the gospel. The holy gospel according to St. Luke. The gospel is from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking, whatever they provide for you. Enter a town and its people welcome you, Eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace, sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, living in the good news and sent to proclaim the good news that we know through Jesus, guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's Holy Spirit sometimes is working to calm us down and comfort us, but God's Spirit also works to stir things up, to agitate us, setting us free from our bonds, calling us to faith, sending us to share. In the gospel lesson for today, the church, the community of Jesus, is deployed. God sends people out like you and me. God works through people that God sends into this world to serve the mission of God. Notice that Jesus did not say to the 70 when Jesus sent them out, go build 70 buildings. No, nope. uh, that isn't how he gave birth to the church. That isn't how the Pentecost story goes either. That's not the message they received that day. Instead, uh, Jesus gives them directions to go out two by two with a deep peace that they are serving the will of God and announcing the presence 
and the work of our gracious God. We are living in a time that's closer to the realities of the early church than we might imagine. God did great things back then. Look for God's presence today doing great things here and now. Congregations today and pastors today sometimes slide into an assumption that our mission is to keep the church of the past going as it has been. That's not the mission Jesus gives in the lesson from Luke. We can overfocus on our history and traditions. We can fall into thinking that we are successful if we can afford to have a pastor and keep a building. Yet those are simply tools that exist to serve a deeper goal. And our goal is to proclaim the good news that we have a gracious God who has come near and is here with us now. In Jesus, God reveals who God is and what God longs for in our world and, 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 and in our lives through Jesus. And God's spirit works through people, through ministers, through God's church to grow and sustain the lives of Christ followers, loving their neighbors and loving God's world. I love the lesson from Luke where Jesus sends people out two by two ahead of Jesus. He sends them out together. There's no self-sufficiency. And we would be wise to remember to not try to go it alone in our own spiritual lives or in our own ministries. In fact, it's better to take somebody with us when we go and visit the sick and study scripture or when we practice works of love. Jesus also does not teach that you got to have a three-year seminary degree before you can be sent out to do ministry. In fact, Jesus sends out people empowered by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the presence and the work of our gracious God and sends them out ahead of him. Jesus sends us out into our everyday lives to minister by loving our neighbors and sharing the good news, sharing the good news that God is for us and with us here and now. Your call to be a minister of Jesus happened in your baptism and it continues all the day of your, days of your life. We're moving deeper into a shift in how we imagine and do church. We're shifting from the last several decades where we focused on a ministry of performance, where the pastor does the ministry for a congregation, towards a ministry of participation, where the church focuses on equipping the baptized ones. We're going back to the models of the early church the church exists to feed you and grow you all deeper in faith and hope and love. It also exists to encourage you and support you to practice your faith and sends you out like the 70 into the midst of life to share and develop your particular vocations and ministries, your contributions to building up the body of Christ and to loving God's world. The Spirit is not only working in your pastor, the Spirit doesn't only work through leaders in your church or people you perceive to have bigger or deeper faith, but God works through all of us, stirring us up, gifting you all, and gifting all of God's people to follow Jesus, love one another, and love God's world. In Luke, the author says this work will be dangerous. We're sent, we are sent out like lambs among wolves, Jesus says. Ministry will make you vulnerable. The world is dangerous in more ways than the virus that has our attention these days. It's dangerous in more ways than the insidious sin of, of racism, the virus of racism, which takes on communal and personal and systemic forms. And we need and are thankful for the ongoing guidance and work of God's spirit when we feel vulnerable when we feel unsure of what path we should take in our personal life or in our lives as com a community of faith. But following Jesus opens us up, it cracks us open so that we care about God's world in all of its brokenness. Like God cares for us and God calls us to love our neighbors like God loves us, all of our neighbors. And we remember as we do live out our faith life that sometimes the wolves actually are hiding inside of us personally or inside of our community of faith. We have to have that awareness about us. And Jesus in today's lesson teaches us that we need to be able to travel light in God's mission field. In a time like this, we're working fast and we're trying to sort out what matters and what does not. 
You know, crisis times are a time of threat, but they're also a time of opportunity. So we have to evaluate what will serve the gospel as we move forward as God's church and what has served the church well in the past but won't serve us in the coming chapter of our ministry. Winston Churchill said that a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. So be sure to hold on to and carry the essentials of following Jesus along with you. And I think we should carry along the gifts of our Lutheran movement. But remember that God keeps reforming each of us and God keeps reforming God's church to serve in all of the many cultures of this world and in all of the different times that we have been living in and through. God continues to send you and your community of faith to grow Christians deep and wide in faith and engage the challenges of our time and our communities. Remember, God's Spirit is here to stir you up, to comfort, to protect, and to guide you. Jesus did not leave you and me alone. Now, we often read this text from Luke 10 when we're talking about the work of inviting people to consider ordained or rostered ministry. But we do need God's Spirit to call out pastors and other leaders for God's church in this time. This lesson is about needing laborers for the harvest is a call to all the baptized, not just some. Jesus is talking to all the 70 and to all of us when he says, your attempts to love and proclaim the good news may not be welcomed sometimes. You may not be the right messenger. It may not be the right time for people to hear the message that you're carrying. Trust that God will, there, will make another time for you or God will use another messenger to do God's work. When we're doing ministry, we have to trust God and know that it isn't always going to happen when we're trying to do ministry in our life. Jesus came, loved, taught, healed, suffered, and died, and was raised again. Jesus sent God's Spirit to be with people back in time and today, and he sends us to cure and care for those who are sick in physical, emotional, spiritual, or relational ways. The kingdom, the reign of God, has come near in Jesus, and it continues to come near in the ongoing work of God's Spirit, of Christ's Spirit, God's Spirit gives us the power to trust even when we're full of questions and we're living with doubts. God's Spirit gives us the power to forgive sins and trust that God will do the work of healing and restoration and use our hands. God gives us the power to be healers with words of encouragement and reminders that God's grace has claimed us and will never let us go. And we share that good news of God's gracious love with everyone. Sharing that God is faithful to us and here with us now in our lives is our ministry. And our response to God's presence and work sing out a hymn of gratitude. As Luther said, to be an evangelist is as simple as one beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread. And that's what Jesus has called us to do. The kingdom, the reign of God has come near and Jesus keeps drawing near to you and me. My favorite image of the Holy Spirit is a memory I have of my father down in the sheep barn blowing breath into a newly born lamb that did not start breathing like most do upon entering the world. Dad cleared the, the lamb's throat with his finger. Then he stuck a piece of straw down the throat to try to make it gag, but that didn't work. And then he gently blew into the lamb's mouth. And when that did not work, we were all getting scared. He slapped the lamb on his chest a couple times and blew breath in again more forcefully. And all of a sudden, the lamb that was as good as dead suddenly took a breath and started to breathe. And I remember being down in the sheep barn a few days later and watching the same lamb bouncing around the sheep pen, having fun. God comes through God's Holy Spirit and blows new life uh, into you and me personally, into our communities day after day. And God's presence stirs us up sometimes, and God's Spirit comforts us other days. 
And God sends you and me to be angels. That word literally means messengers. Messengers to this world that needs to know the good news that God is for us and that God is with us, just like we do day after day after day. Imagine that. God can and does and will use you and me. Through Christ Jesus, God's Spirit can make all things possible. Amen. Let us go now to the banquet. To the feast of the universe, the table set and our place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. I will rise in the early morning. The community is waiting for me. With a spring in my step, I'm walking. With my friends and my family, let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table set and a place is waiting. Come, everyone, with your gifts to share. God invites all the poor and hungry to the banquet of justice and good, where the harvest will not be hoarded, so that no one will lack for food. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe, the table set and a place is waiting. Come, everyone, with your gifts to share. May we will such a place among us where all people are equal in love. God has called us to work together and to share everything we have. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table set and a place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. Let us stand together in prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, we call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts that are present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in the air, the wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution or the COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we're prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call in your spirit of healing. Bless the nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort. 
this morning. Lord, we especially remember those that are needing healing. Dolores Ritchie, Carol Nornberg, Rich Peterson, Carolyn Landberg, John Remy, Vern Bastine, Dee Weiland, Bob Willardson, Glenn Karsten, Paul Langseth, Jill Williams, Kevin and Sherry Adolph, Carmel Holinka, Laura Lee Tim Knuth. We thank you also and pray for uh, Diane also as she as she heals this week. We pray for Adele Westra, Alfie Copperwood, Joe Struve, Dorothy Mickelson, John David, Tim Hansberger, Ron and Arla Horn, Lily Hullen, Nick Williams, and the other brother-in-law Williams, I believe Scott, Mitchell Wagner, Steve Cohen, those that are grieving, the family of John Beveridge, the family of Joyce Bruce Juber, the family of John Nystrom, the family of Mary Ann Bow, the family of Midge Hopeness, the family of Judy Kepsel. And we add to healing also Tracy Summers, the granddaughter of Sandra and Don. We also pray, Father, for the health and safety of all, for the first responders, the medical workers, and the essential workers during this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. Give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside of these doors. Surprise us daily. Surprise us with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing that you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope, and as you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You may sit down as the prayers continue. And our communion will will continue also when the pastor, when the new pastor comes. And so we'll uh, pray today for thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke the light into the darkness, you called forth beauty from chaos, and you brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on that desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word was made flesh. You speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God 
in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the low you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summon echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. What a beautiful day we have today. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.